Good afternoon. My name is Debbie Mills. I'm the Director of Student Affairs here at Full Sail University. I want to welcome you all and thank you for coming, those of you that are here on campus, but also those that are joining us, bleh, I can't even talk, joining us online today. So we're real excited to have you. We have this awesome panel. We have Marcella, who is the owner of Dream Asylum Studios. Uh, we have Bryce Hellman, who is a realist from, say it again, Forward Thinking Designs. And then we have Kim Alpert, who's the Director, director of Creative Technology at DCI Art Forum. So how about a round of applause for these awesome guests? <laughs> so today we're talking about life after full sale. But the first thing I'd like to start off with is assuming, let's assume that these, these students are all at orientation. So give them a couple of tips about what you think is important for getting through school first, and then we'll talk about after full sale. Nice, um, I guess I'll begin. So, you know, and, and I can speak from my experience, um, and it was quite some time ago, but I think it still applies. Um, you know, when you first start out in full sale, you have to grasp that this is not an ordinary, um, education school, um, it is called the real world education for a reason. It's, they're here to really prepare you and prep you at least on, on a schedule sense. Um, if you take anything from it, the lack of sleep <laughs> that you're gonna endure after you, you graduate, um, and just a lot of hard work. There's so much that comes at you very quickly once you're out in the field, and you have to be able to be quick on your feet. You know, it's, it's, it, in school, you, you have that crutch. You, you know, it's where you can really make mistakes and it be okay. In the real world, you can make mistakes. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to be quick. And if you make those mistakes, don't continue to keep making them because that's where you might cut, you know, put yourself in a position where you no longer have that position or you no longer have that job. And you don't ever want to be overlooked. You never want to be overlooked um, you know, once you get out into your field and, and someone's just like, well, she or he is not capable. You know? and, and Lastly, I'd like to just say, um, I think I'm, I'm really happy to see so many women now um, that come to Full Sail because when I was here, just to give you an idea, my class was around 160, 165, and there was only five women in the class. And just throughout the school, it was really rare to see women, uh, and particularly in the recording arts uh, field. So I really commend you women that are trying to uh, pursue an education in not only recording, but film, digital media, com computer animation, and so forth. So uh, getting through school, that's, at sometimes that seems almost impossible. I remember some of those lectures and some of those labs. Staying awake through a four-hour lecture, that's a gauntlet sometimes, <laughs> especially when you have a 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. lab and then a 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. lecture. I've done plenty of those. Um, yeah, and that's, that's you're right, it, that's the real world. I mean, right now my current work schedule starts at 10 p.m. and goes till 8 a.m. Mm. And then I, I'm still on call for the rest of the day. So uh, my client likes to wake me up a lot and saying there's a problem and I have to drive in. All right, great. So little sleep, that's the real world, that, that really is. Um, you know, keeping your head down and really, really studying, um, you know, that's important. Uh, it's not necessarily about your grade performance. I mean, I don't think I've ever looked at a, I don't think I've really ever considered a, a GPA on a resume. Uh, but what I do want is, you know, knowledge retention. Is, you know, are you really absorbing all of this content? Are you really locking it away? Because I can tell you from being out in the heat of the moment, you know, where it's like things around you, <laughs> things around you are just falling apart. You know, you're trying to troubleshoot whatever is happening either in your studio or in your line of work. And all of a sudden you just remember what you practiced in lab. And it's like, great, I know how to fix this. I can just jump in because I have that knowledge locked away. If you want to slide through, you know, your education, I, those things are just not going to come back to you. You're not going to be able to rely on your skills. So hone your abilities to, to troubleshoot you know, I'm talking from ShowPro as, 
as my degree program, but you know, it applies to film, it applies to studio people, it applies to any degree program. You know, even if you're in graphics design, what happens if your computer doesn't boot one day? You know, what are you gonna do? So, you know, trust your skill set to to troubleshoot and try and get back up on the road because you know you can't keep the client waiting. So, it starts with really paying attention in lecture, asking all the questions, going to extra labs when they're offered, and uh, connecting with the right people that want to keep pouring knowledge into you. And that's, that's the easiest way to, to really get through school. I love that. That muscle memory is what you guys are building right now. And you're gonna use it like every day forever for the rest of your life forever. I, I think the two things for me um, in my actual orientation when I was a student um, Gary Jones said one of the things that I thought was like the weirdest and has been the truest where, and I don't know if he still does this, but he said, look to your left, look to your right, introduce yourself. Cause one of these people might be your boss someday. <laughs> and it was chilling and it's true. And someone who was in that room with me at orientation, I was their boss someday. And I've continued to work and hire and collaborate with a lot of folks that I went through school with or that I've met through the school throughout the years. Um, I think the other thing that is really important, and I learned this lesson after I got out of school, and luckily it was just kind of the way that I lived beforehand too, you know, it's really easy to have a good time. We've got a lot of creative people here, everybody's really awesome. It's awesome to like have fun and like party and hang out and get to know people, but this isn't the party. You guys, like this is the part, you're trying to get to the party. So it's always important to remember, you know, to do the work now, because when you get to the party and you got a job and you're making money and you're making really awesome stuff, it's significantly more fun than if you're just like hanging out, eating Cheetos, not doing your work right now. The trust, I trust if I tell you anything, like that the other party is a better party. Um, so, you know, for people who maybe if your friends aren't on the same page with you, let them enjoy that party now and know, you know, in your heart and in your guts that where you're going and what you're paying it forward to is worth so much more because this facility and these instructors are so accessible to you right now. Thank you. So let's say they're graduating now and they're, they're ready to launch. What, what's some of the first things that they need to do to prepare for success? Well, I would say you need to be preparing for success while you're in school. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, figure out what exactly you want to do. Now, that may change while you're starting to take your different courses. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember when I was in school, I went from wanting to do music, and then I got into the post-production class, and I was like, Damn, I this is what I want to do. I want to do post-production. And then by the time I got into my advanced recording, engineering course, I went right back into the music. Um, so don't be, don't, don't fear that if you like, don't think that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. No, it might happen because something might spark when you start taking some of these classes or, you know, an instructor might, you know, open this world to you. So um, as far as what happens after graduation has to start while you're in school and figure out where you want to work. Create, start creating a wish list you know, these are companies, these are, you know, these, th this is the path that I want to take and start researching, start finding out the most information that you can. Um, if your, your heart is so set on a few of those, I would even try to reach out. I would even try to reach out and just kind of introduce yourself. I mean, don't fill out an application if you're not being, if you're not graduating for, you know, a whole nother year, but you know, just kind of put them, put your, yourself on, on their radar, like at least your name or, you know, I would try to, Something that I did was um, I knew exactly where I wanted to work. I knew I wanted to work at the Hit Factory in Miami. And uh, about four months into my course, I reached out to the studio manager and he passed me off to um, the assistant and um, um, assistant manager. And I basically just said to her, like, listen, I'm a student at Full Sail. I just want to come in and just tour the facility, just check it out, just kind of, you know, somewhere that I think I'd want to work when I graduate. And, you know, they weren't opposed to it. You, you would really be surprised that a lot of these you know, places, they would be glad to show you around because really they need you at some point. Employees don't stay around, people move on with their life and they have to keep hiring new people. So I did that, and for four months in I did that. I went to the Hit Factory, I took a tour, I introduced myself, my face, everything. And about seven months in, I 
called up and just said, hey, it's me again. And the guy was like, what do you, you know, he was kind of like, what do you want from me? And I was like, no, I'm just letting you know I'm graduating in like four or five months. And I'm just trying to see, you know, if there's any possibility of a, you know, of a job. And he's like, well, I wouldn't know. It's kind of far from now. I'm like, okay, cool. So about two months before my graduation, I called again. <laughs> I just kept, you know, I was very insistent. And I was just like, listen, what's going on? With, is there a possibility that I can, you know, submit an application in the next 30 days? And he was just like, well, right now we don't have any openings, blah, 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 same story. And right before my graduation, I tried again. He said, there's no openings. So I was like, all right. So I just started kind of going to other places and submitting. About two weeks after I graduated, guess what? I got the call that he had an opening. And I only feel like I was up for that because of how much pressure or just, you know, I just was around. I just kind of was saying like, hey, you know, here he had all these applications. And I'm sure when he saw mine, he was like, wait, this is this girl. And there was something about, I mean, he told me after. He was like, it was because you were so, he's like, you know, I didn't know if you were going to be the smartest one to hire. I didn't know if you were going to be, he's like, and ladies, we have a bigger challenge. You know, there, we are in a very male dominated industry and, you know, we could be looked, we can be overlooked very easily, but you know, I had myself, I put myself in a position to be prepared and, and just be ready. And I think when you have, when you come, when you're in this, in this whole process of going to classes, don't just, you know, study and do everything that you have to do to excel in your courses, but remember there's life after full sale. And ultimately that's what you're gonna be working for. It's what are we gonna do after school because you're not doing this for the next 30 years of your life. You know, that would be horrible if you're in school for that long. So just remember, start making these wish lists. Start figuring out what path you wanna take. Where do you wanna live? You know, where, whatever industry that you, wanna, that you wanna go after, where are they excelling in the most, you know? And, and, you know, so forth. Just start creating those lists. Wow. That's a lot. There's a lot. Sorry. No, 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 no. That's great. That's great. Because, I mean, you hit, like, all the bullet points that, that I was going to say, oh, too. Oh, good. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, cool. Okay, so she's talking about this. I have to, I'm going to lose if I don't write it down. So I'm, I'm taking notes myself here based, <laughs> based upon what everyone else says. So, um, I, I mean, you touched, on, you touched on something early. It's like your, uh, early on in your career program, that's, that's where to start. You know, your career started on day one at orientation right. and you need to realize that, you know, your professionalism is being watched right now. You're, you're building your resume right now. You know, there's a lot of great volunteering opportunities that shows us great work history, you know, when you're trying to find your first job. And I, I keep telling students that, and this is maybe one regret that I have when I went through Full Sail, I went to career development way too late. I went two months before the end, which is kind of when they come to you, but that's too late. I, I wish I would have gone, you know, maybe my second month here mm -hmm. and just said, hey, I'm Bryce, good to meet you, see ya. Like, that's meeting one, you just meet them, right? Meeting two, okay, here's, here's what I hope to get out of Full Sail, and like, you know, let them inspire you as well. And then, hey, how do I write a resume? And hey, can you look this over? Can you look at this draft? How about this draft? How about this draft? Because you have to keep perfecting it and getting better. And, and then, you know, the more that they get to know you, the more that they can help you hone down to one particular skill. So I had, I had a great moment today with the student where I was saying, you know, uh, we're, we're talking about the controversial phrase, uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. And I said, well, I disagree with that phrase because I, I found it personally beneficial in my career path to be a jack of all trades. But he raised a good point. He says, well, the, the counter argument to that is, you know, you can't come out of school and just go and do everything. You can't be super tech. You can't be super roadie, you know, or you can't, you can't possibly do it all. You trust me. I, for one, realized very quickly that I knew nothing when I graduated. I'm like, oh, man, there is so much out here for me to learn. So don't stop learning. But, but when you graduate, you should f try and focus on one particular goal that you're going to focus, you know, that you want to go after. You know, let that be your particular outlet for this moment of I'm looking for s this specific stepping stone in my career path. Start there. Start going after that. Research your companies. That's a big thing. Research companies that apply to that stepping stone and make sure that that company is a good fit for you. You know, not every employer out there is going to be a good fit for 
what you're hoping to do, where you're hoping to go. Not all companies really build up employees. They, you know, some, some companies struggle in that arena. Uh, so it's important to find a place where you feel comfortable, where you feel like you're going to be challenged and strengthened and that matches what it is in particular that you want to end up. Um, and a, a great way to do that, uh, you know, you can cold call them or you can, you know, visit trade shows, find out trade shows in your industry, read through, you know, your industry's magazines, you know, there's, there's tons of magazines out there and you can get them for free too, you know, do all that research and go and meet with representatives from that company and try and find out, okay, tell, you know, tell me about your day to day. I guarantee if you like for show pro, if you go to Infocom and you meet up with a, you know, a product rep and you're like, Hey, just tell me about your day to day, you know, in, in your life, it would probably take them aback for a second, but then they'd be like, wow, like no one's ever asked me that before, you know, find out like, is that a company where I'm going to appreciate working, you know, that I feel is right for me. And do I think that's a good outlet and, and use that and use those stepping stones every, every step of the way. And before you know it, you're, you're developing your path right before your eyes, just by doing one step at a time. That was really, you guys touched out a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Um, no, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, going to career development is a really big one. I mean, for me, the career development department here was one of the reasons that I came to Full Sail and even bigger, one of the reasons I was able to lobby my parents into getting behind me on the idea, knowing that I would have this career development placement office for the rest of my life which I didn't just use as a student, I have used like in the like mid level of my career to help me level up and give me some more uh, assistance when I was going from being kind of a more wacky creative director to wanting to be a more like high end <laughs> polished creative director um, to which conversations were, Kim, I think it, maybe it's time to take those robots off your resume. You know, really classy stuff like that that I was up to. Um, I've been lobbying for my, my career advisor to adopt me for the last 15 years since I was here. Uh, she's amazing. And I just, I don't know why, like, it wasn't really like a conscious thing. It was just kind of like, well, I'm going to go introduce myself because that's their whole job. And I think we get, I think as artists and creative, we kind of are like, they don't care. We just like default to being like, you know, self-eliminating. And like their entire purpose is caring for you. Their entire purpose is for your success. Their mm -hmm. success is your success. And they just don't know. Like nobody is giving them a dossier of your dreams. You have to go and early on just be like, this is what I want. This is who I am. How do I, how do I get here? And they'll help guide you. They're an incredible resource. Some of them have been here longer than most people here. And they know an incredible wealth of uh, that information. I think one of the things that you were talking about, Bryce, with trade shows, there's one thing that I think I really should have done more of as a student, is take advantage of being a student. Mm -hmm. Like so many trade shows have like student volunteers and student scholarships and student admission. You know, so many festivals allow like student competitions and like I did not do enough or any of that really and I wish that I would have gone because it's much more competitive when you're older to like get into some of those competitions and much more expensive when you're older to get a lot of those tickets. And it, it is a really incredible networking opportunity um, to meet people. And you can, you can assume that like if you meet the tech rep that has a certain kind of equipment, they know the tech people at the place that you want to work that they sell that equipment to. And if you're that really smart student that they think is really rad, they will probably mention you because that's currency. Like there is this currency of knowing good people and networking that is really, really strong. Um, and I do it all the time. I met a really great student and I know somebody that's working on a really great project in LA and like we got talking, I was like, oh, I gotta introduce you to her. Cause I know it's gonna help my friend out and it's gonna, she's gonna be like, oh, Kim Elper really helped me out. And it's not that transactional, it's just like kar karma points, you know? Everybody knows everybody in this, this industry and it really is, you know, the tide raises all ships. We have to kind of all chip in together and move forward. So I think that's a good, that answered it. I really liked that answer too. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so earlier, Marcella said that you, you don't have to be perfect. You're never going to be perfect. I mean, none of us are. So what's your advice when we get out in the industry and, and we fail a little bit or a big bit, um, what's your advice for getting back up and getting, getting back on track? 
Um, I guess my advice would be is, um, you know, just know it was, it was, a, you know, a miss mishap or whatever, but know that, you know, it's something that you can learn from, learn from it and, and, and just, you know, continue not, don't knock yourself down, give yourself, you know, a moment to kind of, you know, sulk if you need to, but get up and, and, and just, you know, pick up pick up your head don't walk around sulking and just you know believe in yourself that you can really you can make it happen the next time around you know and just hope that you don't have a boss that just doesn't <laughs> that doesn't you know accept it after one mistake but most people aren't everybody is very forgiving guys trust me when i remember when i first got into into in my first session I, it was it was so crazy because you know you go into this school, you know I I I graduated with the honors of re the advanced recording engineering uh, the uh, course, and um, I, I just was like I know everything I knew I signal flow and blah blah. Then I get in I get out there and it's just like I don't know what happened to all my knowledge. It's just, <laughs> I, I, you know what it was just like I was I was nervous and I was like oh gosh you know and here's like the the, the tech of the hit factory and he's like show me how to patch this and you know I'm like I do this all the time like what. what and I, I was just like, well, um, and, and, and I'm like, signal flow was blank. It was gone, you know? And then they just kind of was like, all right, look, let's just do this. And, and then, you know, I just kind of was like, all right, calm down. So now, set up the mic. Where do we do, you know? And I just start going in baby steps. No one's going to expect you to work at the, at the pace of lightning, you know, right when you get out. It's not going to happen. That's why there's, there's increments where you start off as like a general assistant or an intern, and then you little by little start getting into the rooms. Or, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I speak in the world of recording, but, you know, you get the gist. Um, it, it's, um, yeah, I think, you know, when you, when, you, when, you get, when you make a mistake or you mess up, just don't, don't be hard on yourself. Just know what's gonna happen. We are human. And um, I always say, you know, I, we, we, we always are the imperfect, perfect people, so. Yeah. Dealing with failure is really, it, it's personal, you know? It really does hurt, because uh, no one aspires to be a failure. Mm -hmm. And trying to, trying to rehome yourself and recenter yourself to find the motivation to set out again you know, it's like I poured everything into this dream and I failed. So what is left in, within me to go out and try again? But it's the persistence of, of your motivation that can self-inspire. And by realizing it's like, okay, I made a mistake or, or that didn't work. You know, sometimes, sometimes we did everything right, you know, but sometimes it just doesn't, go according to the way that we thought it would. It, it doesn't pan out, you know? And that's unfortunate, that's an unfortunate situation. But then that's a learning opportunity. And so now you can say, okay, I had this great idea and it didn't take off. Either it wasn't accepted, you know, people weren't into it or for whatever reason. It's like, okay, so check that off the list, okay? Now I understand based, to, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, you're, you keep an open mind in everything you do and let everything be a learning opportunity, not just the, not just the failure. Hindsight's twenty twenty. but I hope that, you know, through every experience you're saying, okay, am I getting feedback for what I'm doing? Is someone else affirming what I'm doing? Is my mentor, uh, you know, guiding me through this? Because I've been talking all week about mentorship and how important that is to, to really invest in your life and really make every day a learning opportunity. So, when there's a failure, when there's a setback, you know, you gotta take a moment, you gotta breathe. It, whether, it's in the, whether it's in the moment, you know, whether it, you know, it's part of your work day and it's like, crap, I just made a huge mistake, you know, okay, take five minutes and just calm yourself and, tr you know, try to correct the problem that day. Or if you make a career mistake where it's like, okay, this is gonna take me a few weeks or months to come back from, you know, recenter yourself. Take a, you know, don't take a vacation, but take, you know, take a day and just be like, okay, I'm going to just, you know, recenter myself and refine my motivation and remind yourself why it is you do what you do. Mm -hmm. the, I think the best piece of advice was from my admissions rep, actually, uh, right before I graduated, it was like the day before I graduated. She says, don't forget why you went to Full Sail in the first place. And I was like, Wow, and that like really hit me in the moment. And I want you, I hopefully you guys remember that quote before you guys walk the stage, because 
when she said that, in my mind, just the whole last two years just flashed before my eyes, and I remember being a new student here and being scared out of my mind at orientation about what I was going to get into, and then now I'm like totally excited to walk the stage, and you know, I feel like I'm just gonna like grab life by the horns, and you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna ride this sucker, right? And, and wow, she said that, and it was just like, I felt so inspired. And then there were times where I didn't have a job, things set me back, you know, I was having a hard time, you know, my career totally sidestepped, you know, halfway, halfway through my relatively young career. And, and I said, okay, well, that didn't work, or I'm not happy here, or, you know, let's try something else. Okay, give me a day, let me think about, about this, let me sleep on this for a few nights, you know. I never make any big decisions before I sleep on it, you know. And, if that, and that's how I get in touch with my dreams. It's like, if, if I have a good dream about it, or if I have a nightmare about it, that's, that's one telling sign, you know? So it's like, if I wake up in the morning and I think I am so excited for this idea that I had yesterday, then I think it's gonna stick, you know? Then it's like, all right, now I'm excited. I feel this, I woke up ready for this, you know? And, and that's just how I find my, my internal energy of, of wanting to, to go out and keep moving forward. And then I, even in those moments, I think, why did I go to full sail in the first place? Because <laughs> there's that passion there. And let that passion keep defining your every move, even when you get set back. I thought for a second you were gonna say, just take a vacation from all of your problems. Like, what about Bob? And then I was gonna follow <laughs> it up with like, baby steps to full sail, baby steps across the state. I was gonna baby step us all the way there. Um, failure is really, really rough. I think I spent, uh, and I still spend, I'm not gonna like, I don't worry about it at all anymore. No, I cry a lot. <laughs> like, a lot. Anyone who knows me in my regular life knows I'm pro-crying. <laughs> I, I have a firm stance that like, if I let it in, it's gonna pickle my insides. I gotta let it out. Like, all that salty goodness. Um, I take stuff super personally uh, when people don't like stuff that I do. When it's my art, it really hurts. When it's my work, it's annoying. Uh, but so if, if I really, sometimes I care too much still, um, and there's still a balance to it uh, because some ideas are your babies, and I, I still struggle with that. And I think I always will. I think it will always make me have the fire that I have. Um, but I definitely, early on in my career, every project professionally was my baby. Everything that didn't go well hurt and I and I then I would like beat myself up even more so I got to suffer like additionally twice and then I would also then worry about the failure before the failure then beat myself up for the failure so then I got three out of it so I took what could have been just one uncomfortable situation tripled it <laughs> not bad good it's a good ratio uh, <laughs> and you get you just kind of like have to get better about it I think I really wanted I set the bar way, way, way too high for myself, and I spent a long time being like, "Well, I have to be the best. I have to be, you know, the best at all the things, and you know, be the sh the, the shiniest star in the room, and all that kind of stuff, and you know, be the best at making stuff." And now I'm more concerned with just not being the worst. <laughs> and I think that as long as I'm not the worst, I, I feel okay. Um, so I've gotten a little bit better because it's. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you want more stories, but like I've had epic failures, like just horrible, ridiculous failures that we could talk about. I could do my own talk that's just about like things <laughs> Kim's done wrong. <laughs> like that's 90 no. minutes okay, next, yeah. off camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Next, next Hall of Fame. Next Hall of Fame, <laughs> off camera. Things Kim did wrong. Things right. Kim did wrong, gloves off, building two. All right. Has to be, <laughs> it has to be in building two though. Okay. Okay. All right. Black we're, box. We're on. Got it. We're on. All right, at this time, I, I think we'd like to open it up and, and get some questions from you guys. So put your thinking caps on and let's hear what you got to say. Come on, raise your hands. Nobody has any questions. Uh, the first question is always a scary I'll ask you, oh, there, if there you are. don't ask okay. us questions, I'm gonna ask you questions. Okay, we got one over here. Yeah. You don't want that. So, yeah. <laughs> hold on a second and we'll get a mic. No, they yeah. can pass the mic over here. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, how are you able to balance um, your work life and your health? Just staying healthy in, in general because uh, one thing that I kind of have been struggling with is, um, you know, making sure that 
I'm eating at least three times a day, <laughs> not just worrying about homework and finals and all that. Um, but you know, you guys actually out in the real world doing this stuff and having way more work, way more stress. How do you do it? I almost feel like I should go first because they know me. And I don't know if you got, I don't know, I would immediately be like, well, I'm a sick person. So that's, <laughs> you're like really speaking to me. So I have an unexplained that was thought to be Crohn's uh, colitic incident. So I spent um, the majority of the fall of 2014 in the hospital. Wow. Um, and I literally had a call with my boss. And I had been, I had gone from owning my company to having a day job because I'd been hit by a car in May that year. Jeez. So I got T-boned by a guy going like 40, 45 miles an hour and was able to walk away with just some minor displaced bones, but went back in-house at an ad agency. And then when I got sick, it was like bonkers because I didn't even think to ask if the company had disability. And now, like, all of a sudden, I'm, like, bleeding out of places you know something's wrong when you're bleeding and, like, just in horrible pain. And I remember before going into, like, uh, an operating room, being on the phone with my boss and her being so upset and, like, her not understanding how sick I was and me not knowing how to communicate what I needed because I had that bar so, so, so high about being the best all the time. Um, and it was, it was really, really difficult. And it was a huge, like both the car accident and getting sick were huge eye-opening experiences about it doesn't really matter. Like it matters and it's important, but like we're not saving lives. Like nobody's house is gonna get set on fire. It's probably just like some dudes aren't gonna make as much money as those dudes want for like a day if you <laughs> postpone some stuff. Um, and that stuff isn't, it isn't that, it isn't that important, you know? Uh, so it, it is a really difficult balance. You know, eating, you have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to, you have to love, you have to connect. You know, those other things, you think you don't need those things, but there's an incredible amount of studies that, you know, people in isolation and, and people without that kind of connectivity um, really do suffer. So you have to recharge yourself, and no, no one in this universe will make you do that. If you've got an amazing partner and they push you to do that, you've got an amazing partner. But at the end of the day, they're going to get busy with something, and like, you got to do it, you know. And uh, you got to make time for it. So like now, some of the stuff I try to put time in my calendar, like a real dork that'll be like, Kim Alpert, like yoga, like you got to yoga. And I'm not even going to a class, like just in my own house. I tell myself, like you got to yoga now, like you got to go read, read a book. <laughs> it's in my schedule. I'm like, sorry guys, I can't go to your show. I got to read a book. <laughs> and you got to hold yourself to it. You know, this project, this is the project. Like this job, this is the job. You know, it's not the employer. It's not full sale. It's, it's your path and your journey. And you have to really think about what you want that story to be. Um, and if you wind up in the hospital because you're some weird stuff happened, let me know and I'll send you some information. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, ultimately you just need to make it make it's gotta be your schedule. No one's gonna say, Oh hey, what's your name? Vanya. Vanya. No one's gonna say, Hey Vanya, don't forget to work out today. Don't forget to <laughs> take that thirty minute jog. Yeah. Listen, I, 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 I work, I'm a mom, I work out five to six days a week. Wow. It's very important for me to eat right. I eat five to six meals a day. And they're not meals, like three of them are meals, two of them are snacks or like a shake. But you got to get in a rhythm. It's really important to create that schedule for yourself. You have to sleep. As much as this industry will suck you away from sleeping, you have to figure it out. Even if you have to catch up at the end of the week, you got to at least be able to take one day out of that week for yourself. And, you know, when you become a mom, ladies, it becomes a lot more difficult because your child takes so much from you. But, you know, it's all it all becomes a part of life's plan and it all kind of works out. But you have to instill that in yourself, you know, because nobody else will. No, everybody will just be selfish and take all your time. And you got to be like, OK, if I got to go to work at 10 o'clock, uh, 10 a.m. And, you know, that means you should maybe be waking up around not nine maybe wake up at like seven, mm -hmm. have a nice healthy balanced breakfast, maybe go for a 30 minute run, have maybe a few minutes to shower and a time, some time for yourself. And then you, you know, but you gotta be able to do it so you're not like always on the mad dash. It's really important. Yeah, morning is Thank like you. bonus time. I feel like that's a thing that I discovered. And what is? Morning. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like bonus yes. time. Like when I was young, I used to be like, what time do I have to be at work? That's when my day starts. Yes. 
And like when I realized like I can actually wake up a couple hours Before earlier. Everybody calls. And yeah, and have this like extra day. Yeah. Like it's it was, <laughs> I, was like, no. I was like, how was I've never thought amazed. about this before? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, so true. It's like a bonus. It's because like a bonus that like honestly, adults know that we yeah. like don't tell people about. The phone calls don't start coming really until like 11, maybe, you know, if it's yeah. an emergency, but like 11, 12. So if you're getting up at a decent hour, you got some time to do a lot. Yeah, it's like bonus time because <laughs> it, it's all yours. Yeah. yeah, no one no one knows <laughs> that you're, you're out. So it's like a secret bonus day. Yeah. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. That's Thank a you. good one. I think you had a question? No. Oh, okay. No, I, I Ooh. Okay. Oh. okay, no. <laughs> All right, we got some more. It'll come back. It'll come back. Oh. Hi, guys. My name is uh, Frank Holland. I'm doing recording arts. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Um, my question is more so uh, aimed at Marcella. Um, so I'm in the beginning. Um, I'm, I've actually been here about a month. Um, so I only have 30% of my uh, hearing in my right ear. Mm. So is there something that you would suggest while training my ear during classes here in terms of like mixing and stuff like that, things that I could do to make sure that um, my mixes are sounding the way they're supposed to? Right. Very interesting. Um, well, you're going to have to get acclimated to being in a room and understanding what you can hear frequency-wise, balance. Obviously, one ear is more proficient than the other. And once you understand that, you, you, know, you have a clear understanding, but as an engineer... You need to really start understanding frequencies. It's a big part. It's basically our job to understand where frequencies lie. Once you understand that, you know, and one thing I would maybe mess around with is not so much sounds from a keyboard. Play with an oscillator and start messing with that oscillator. And that's how I learned frequency. I started to just go on the SSL and just start tweaking on the oscillator and be like, okay, this is what 60 hertz sounds like. Okay, this is about 160. This is about 4K start practicing that and then apply it to, to music, apply it to sound. And now you start to know like, okay, you know, the, the snare is going to live anywhere between 500 uh, hertz to 2.2K, you know, it just depends on the, the where the, hair, the snare is uh, hitting. And you start to understand, okay, well, if it's like a horn sound, you know it's going to live in this range. And then from there, you start to acclimate yourself. But you have to start that now because, you know, in the world of mixing, like that didn't happen for me overnight. That happened when I was sitting in sessions in recording sessions. I would make sure that I would listen. Find out what some of your best music is that you love and use those as reference points, you know, that you can go into a, into a room and be like, OK, I know what this song sounds like. And, you know, use the, 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 the parts of those songs to compare it to songs that you're working with and be like, this doesn't sound right. And that's I, I would really start your foundation there. But the oscillator is a big, big, big trick that I used for months. I remember um, Hunter. I don't know. Hunter Renning was one of my instructors. We actually built one. And I actually still have this little oscillator. Like, we soldered it and everything. And, um, I, you know, I started with that little oscillator that I made, you know. And then eventually when I, when I had the capability of being into a room, getting into a, a real studio when I worked at the Hit Factory, I would just go on, you know, on their oscillator and just kind of mess around with that. But that's where I learned frequency. That's where I really started to understand where everything kind of lied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You gotta put your hand up. Okay, hi. First of all, thank you guys so much for being here and doing this panel. Um, familiar faces and people who I have not seen before. Um, but I wanted to ask, because as I'm getting closer to graduation, I realize that there are um, you know, different things that I kind of want to experience with with my degree. And Bryce, I heard you talk a little bit about it yesterday. Yeah. Um, but what are your kind of recommendations for um, exploring the different like opportunities with your degree after graduation? Uh, and that really starts with career dev. Uh, I I didn't even know the word integration until I talked to them. I didn't, I didn't really even understand the idea of design consulting until I talked to them. And like I basically sat down and was like, you know, I really like the idea of putting putting systems together based upon a shopping list. And I said like I really enjoy wisely managing other people's money. You know, spending other people's money <laughs> is what I said. And he was like, you know, that's consulting, right? And I was like. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's a whole new avenue I never heard before. So, like, 
you know, definitely talking to, to the, the career advisors, like that is their job to help you find, to help guide you into the passion, you know, and, and no one does it better than, than full sale career dev. I mean, hands down. And I mean, you can go in there not even understanding yourself. Firstly, you know, I, I had no idea. Like I was getting close to the end and I'm just like, I will do whatever job anyone hires me to do. Right. And so I walked in there and was just like, well, you know, I, I toyed with this idea, I think. And, you know, this sounds kind of cool. And then they said, well, explore this subject matter, explore this. And they said, you know, here's some companies to, to, to research. And, you know, let that be a question of like, you know, I'm trying to find my passion and I'm looking at some of these avenues. What are good companies for me to look at? And that would be a great question to pose to them. You know, save that for, you know, your second meeting. You know, it, I think a lot of people are just really afraid to go to career dev because it's like, what do I talk about? It's like, I'm scheduling an appointment and then they're going to be like, so how can I help you? <laughs> and you're going to be like, I don't know. I was just told to show up. Like, yeah, like, don't worry. Like, they, they're really good at starting the conversation, actually. Like, all you have to do is to schedule time and you show up. And then they're like, cool. Like, and then they do all the talking. And it's like, oh, wow. Like, this is a lot less painful than <laughs> what I thought it was going to be. And then the conversation gets so much easier after that. So, you know, that's, that is an absolutely great question of just like, well, how do I know where to look and how to research these things? Definitely talk to someone who, who that's their job and that's career dev. Okay. No. Thank you. No problem. I want to pass the mic down to our, on the end here for our online question. Hey guys, this question is for Jaritza. She's in the online computer animation program. She wants to know what you guys did when you were students um, to keep yourselves motivated or inspired to kind of keep going if you felt yourself um, in a slump or struggling. The free foods, you know, sometimes. <laughs> you got free food? Yeah. I Dude, ShowPro rocks. ShowPro gets all the good <laughs> stuff, man. They, Yeah, for sure. Man, my friends, you know, and I know that that's so much harder for the online people, but, you know, it, even though you're not face-to-face -face because you're online, you know, you have those different discussions and forums and stuff, you know, message people and, you know, talk to your instructor and see, like, hey, is there a way that I can you know, ask this person for their email and create an online friendship. You know, it's weird to navigate those virtual things because maybe they're in a different state or come from a different background or maybe they're 40 years older than you, whatever. But you're going through the same thing together and that that community, Full Sail wants to help you build that community online as well as offline. My friends and some of the ones that weren't even in my degree program that I wound up kind of just crossing paths with were the most important thing about, you know, my time here and we we worked on totally different stuff and kept each other inspired and and some of them are still the people that I call with questions today or just to make me laugh when I'm in a in a good cry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I brought it back. Oh. Yeah. Oh. My crying. <laughs> <laughs> crier. <laughs> Never have guessed. Really? I yeah. almost cried in a session yesterday. Oh, gosh. It got really real. It got a little <laughs> too real. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, when I was in school, my motivation was, I can't, like, failure was never going to be an option for me. I just had so much um, against me. Um, I, as much as my family supported me and even helped me with the uh, co-signing, um, <laughs> it was just not an op. Like, for me, all I ever did was cry wolf that I wanted to be in the music business. I want to be in the music business. I want so finally I get this opportunity and I just had to work 10 times harder than the next person next mm -hmm. to me because I, I just knew what I wanted and I was not going to allow any lack of sleep or frustrating or, or I don't get this you know I would stay after class and speak to the instructor if I, if I didn't get something and I was you know I didn't have a chance to to ask the questions that I needed to like I would ask the instructor like hey you know you think you can run this by me real quickly again and just try to write my own little notes I would just try to do everything that I can to just keep myself on the up and up because it things got hard it was not easy it was not easy at all and you're talking about a school I don't know if this um, if it still applies but when I went I think if you're like tardy they count it as an absence or you mm -hmm. know that was big time so not, yeah. it's one thing not you know you have to show up and you have to show up on time because if you showed up a few minutes late and now you're in the class, but they count that as an absence. And after so many absences, they automatically fail you. That's a big problem, you know? So you have to be on it, on it, on it, on it. And, you know, you couldn't go in the class and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I had lab at 1 a.m. and I'm just so tired and I woke up late. Tough. 
You know, what are you going to say that when you show up to the session and, and Mariah Carey sitting there waiting to cut vocals? I'm sorry, I was late. I was up late last night. She'd be like, no, bye. You know, yeah. it's like I'm on to the next. So it doesn't, you know, you have to just keep yourself, you have to remind yourself constantly what I think you said earlier, like why, what, what did I come here for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. you constantly, and that question alone, which I love, is, is motivation enough. You know, and if you came here for the right reasons, then that, then that, that's all. It, it should start and stop right there. All right, Keep, you know. Right. So. Yeah, uh, I think the friendships that you make at Full Sail are really, really super important. Like we were actually discussing earlier, that you know, just is such like a family. Mm -hmm. You know, inside inside the Hall of Fame. You know, in and of itself. And I wish that I would have started that you know a little bit more even as a student and show pro is really like that i mean when when the show production students really get into live one and they're sequestered off into their own own little family you know it is awesome when you're doing an event and i'm sure it's the same way when you're working in the studio in the later months and i'm sure it's the same way when you're working in the computer lab when you're doing you know graphics or game design or whatever it is and really finding that good support structure you know with people who think like you that understand you that are your age that have your experiences have similar walks of life you know that's a big thing like big big thank you to you know one of my best friends uh louis hendrix i can't tell you how many milkshakes were consumed at steak and shake at three in the morning <laughs> as we we're having like just complete nervous breakdowns you know and it's just like that that was our life. And we still talk about it. I still pop on Facebook every now and then. It's like, dude, we got to go to Steak and Shake. It's like, I can't wait to see you because we have to go to Steak and Shake. It's like, that's just our thing. And, you know, that, but that got us through it. I mean, I remember that the toughest lab was um, the timed uh, practical in session recording. That was the hardest test to get through. I mean, and I'm sure it still is. And afterwards, I mean, we get out there and, and Louie and I are just standing there and we're just like, we're like jumping up and down. We're like, okay, whew, that was, that was crazy. And then we're like, and then they don't tell your grades right away. And we're just like, I don't know how we did. It's like, dude, steak and shake, <laughs> milkshakes right now. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, finding those people to really rely on, please don't be a loner. And, and I was commenting to someone else uh, about this. Me just walking around campus, you know, I, and I don't know what everyone's situation is, but I do see people, you know, just sitting, sitting by themselves on campus, you know, while the rest of the party's over there, you know, having a silent disco, which I didn't know was a thing, you know, or whatever, That's or rock thing. climbing. Yeah, that, is a real I, that was thing. really cool, by the way. Yeah. So, or, you know, rock climbing or, you know, just chilling, you know, hang, you know, hanging out by the DJ and the live music and all that. And then I see someone like way over by the library, just, just sitting by themselves. And it's like, please, please don't be a loner. Go connect with someone. You know, I, I said this last year, and it's like when you offer your hand to someone to shake them, to shake their hand, it's it's a moment of, of saying, I'm in this really vulnerable space right now where I'm trying to connect with you, and if you meet me in this moment, maybe we can find a friendship together. And the point at which you connect is like, great, now we have, we have a bond here. And even if it's only for a few minutes as you get to know someone, it's like at least remember their name. And that's, that's another big piece of advice I just want to slide in. It's like my whole career path has been nothing more than trying to make someone new remember my name every month. That was my goal <laughs> since orientation all the way throughout Full Sail. I wanted one new person to remember my name every month. Most of the time it was the instructor or it was the lab instructor. You know, you spend a lot of time with the lab instructors, so they get to know you. Uh, but a lot of times it was students. It's like, I want a new student to remember me. And you know what? A lot of those people, I'm still connected with that in the industry. You know, a lot of those people, you know, someone did that with me. They wanted, they wanted me to remember their name and I was able to give them a job for a while. And, you know, it, it totally, it, it, we were, I think at dinner one night we were saying, oh man, I'm so horrible with the names. Like I can remember the face and I can just remember some details about them, but I can't remember the name. I said, that's the point. That's why I want someone to remember my name because if they remember your name, then they're going to remember everything else about you. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's about connecting with people and getting people to remember you. And you don't have to be impressive. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have all the answers. You just need to find someone that we can just bond over with about anything, any hobby, anything, and just say, you know, dude, I, I need some help. This class is really tough and I just need a moment. I just need a break or I just need to just get recharged. That's, that's what I personally did. And that's what worked well for me. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just say like, it's, 
I know I remember being young and like really wanting to be cool. <laughs> and like, I know it's like really not cool to like go walk up to somebody who looks kind of cool and be like, hey, what's up? Like, what are you listening to? What do you, what's this kind of skateboard is? Like, I know that's like a not cool move to do. I guarantee you in a few years of your life, you will realize like that's actually an extremely cool move. Mm -hmm. And all of the stuff you're doing now is preventing yourself from getting to that new place that's actually like way better. And most of the friends that I made and have continued to make even as an adult are people that I go up to and just talk to. And if they think that that's really creepy, then we're not going to have a good friendship <laughs> either way. So better we know now. <laughs> better we get that right out of the way. Um, so, you know, don't let those barriers get in your way. And to the Internet people, too, you know, I've met people in my career that have become good friends from like Twitter. And we've just started sharing information. And I have a friend that's from France that I met on Twitter. And we're both into the same like really specific Max MSP like style of live programming. And this dude's amazing, an amazing like musician and visual artist. He came to the United States for the first time and was like, hey, I'm going to give you a free ticket to this festival. Like, let's come and hang out. Like, let's meet in person. I was like, of course, like, this is amazing. And then like, you know, three weeks later, I'm stealing bananas from New Order in a tent. Like, that's real. Like, that's a real thing that happened. Um, you just have to not be afraid of people. They're incredibly more approachable than you think. And especially here at Full Sail. I mean, we oh, are, yeah. we're all here for the same reasons. We have the same passion, the same drive. Doesn't matter what to, what degree program you're in. I mean, the number of, of game arts uh, friends that I had just because I wandered in that building one day, like, it's crazy. And so, like, we are all, we are all here because we share a common passion for our particular fields and because we're just we just think and feel the same way and that's what's so magical about the school is just you are in a place where you belong and it doesn't matter what degree program you're in and so that right there is is reason enough to connect with anyone i have to add something to that i'm sorry i swear to god i'm done yes. after this okay uh you said something about those of us in the hall of fame and the camaraderie that's there and and we have that and it's amazing and i just want to also say you know out in my regular life, the very few times that I have met other grads, the level of excitement of meeting somebody else that went to Full Sail is infectious. Like, it's like meeting someone that learned a language and grew up on Mars and you didn't know <laughs> that they existed. Like, you get so excited. And I told somebody um, that works here while, while I've been back that I have this friend and you know, when I met him and I learned that he went to full sale, we both were just like, you, me too, Zachleys, yeah. Like, it's just, like, they just get it. Like, they just, get, there's nowhere else in the world that has this. So it's not a matter of like, you know, if you think, oh, I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm, I'm nobody. You're in the Hall of Fame, you're in the club. Like, no way, dude. Like, the second you graduate, you're alumni. The second you graduate, you're in the club. Now you're in the student club. The second you walk that stage, you're in that same family, and we're all part of that. And it's it is really this like critical mass of people, and it's so so awesome. Anytime a student tells me they're thinking about leaving, I'm like, you leave, you're not, you lose that. Like you that's you club. lose a lot of other stuff too. But like, you know, no, I never get stoked when I meet someone who dropped out of full sail. You know, like then they get sad trombone. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> totally different. All right, so you guys want to be in the club. So you got to stay in school, all right? Um, secret yeah. of. All right. Thank you so much oh, for you. all this information. I feel like we got some good psychology today and some great tips for life after full sale. So how about a round of applause for these amazing speakers? All right. And that's a wrap.